morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Captain Adventures. Got to have you guys on board. So we're headed to Algonquin Park today. We're uh, headed to Lake Opiongo. Uh, so we're headed to the west uh, gates. And, uh, yeah. It's about uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, so it was an early uh, get up. So I was up at 2.57 today, so it's going to be a long day for me. We're going to have a few new cast members to this one. We'll introduce you guys later today. But, uh, but yeah, so we're on our way. We're just outside of Avon right now, right beside Canada's Wonderlands. We'll update you guys as we go along. And we have sun, some daylight. We're just outside of Bravenhurst right now, uh, about 145 kilometers outside of our location. And the roads have never been better. Well, folks, we got some snow. We're just um, not far away from the entrance, the west entrance to Algonquin. Gonna check in there, grab our permit, and end on in to the wilderness. There she is, west gate. No turning back now. And there's the ship that we shall set sail on. Made it to the lake. Just packing stuff up into the boat now. Ready to head out shortly. Hey folks, we're ready to roll here. We're uh, just waiting on the captain to join the boat and head it off. There we go. Tying away the last knots. And Mr. Coke over here is just struggling to put this rain jacket on here. Yes, sir. So, as you guys can see here, we got a lot of white caps on the lake. Opionongo is actually the biggest lake in uh, the Algonquin Park area. after a bumpy ride we made it so we're gonna basically set up camp now set up the tents set up the canvas for myself additionally and uh go from there got mr coco behind us setting up the base yep getting her done son we're gonna slowly pluck away we'll catch you guys in a little bit We got tents popping up left, right, and center. Mine's slowly coming along. We're gonna set up a tarp around, uh, up above the actual tent just because we know it's going to rain, so. Just an additional layer of security. 
So basically we're set up here. We have the tarp over top of us just to protect us in case it rains. And it's supposed to, so that's we figured that set that up. Underneath here, we have an emergency blanket just to reflect the heat off us. This time we're using a Thermarest Neo Air. Trying this guy out for the first time. Probably gonna buy it. But uh, this uh, good friend Dave lent it to us. I'm sure you guys will see him later on in the video. But uh, yeah. So over top of that, we're gonna put the wool blanket. Uh, uh, so basically, once again, that layer of protection uh, underneath us. And then over top of us, we have our uh, North Face Lucian minus 15 sleeping bag plus uh, a blanket on to over top of us just to keep us warm. Um, it's not as windy as it was out on the water, obviously, but uh, we're chugging away here. Collected some wood after set finishing setting up the shelter. So we're gonna set up a dining tent as well since it is so windy and it would just be more convenient if, if uh, for cooking and for basically anything. So we're gonna set up the dining tent in a little bit. Maybe take a couple casts on the fishing rod and relax, that's what it's all about. We say this over and over again on Cabin Adventures, but it really doesn't get much better than this. Went on a little bit of a hike from the campsite. We found another campsite basically on the tail end of the peninsula. Also very nice and flat. Got a wood processing factory going on here. So right now we're rebuilding the fire. The boys are kind of moving the rocks around. So the wind is actually coming from this direction over here. And previously, when you would sit over there, the wind would literally blow all the smoke in your face. Now, the issue with that is, is that, well, clearly it's, it's blowing smoke in your face. So now we're gonna open it up so it's more open on this side over here. And you can sit over there and not worry about the smoke going in your face. Well, folks, we're cooking up a feast tonight. We got some salmon with a little bit of Cajun. And we got uh, a little bit of garlic. That's actually rainbow trout in the left one. That's a burgers over there. We're cooking now. These goonies. How will I survive these next couple of hours and days? I'm drinking beer and doing something else. Anyways, guys, we're going to cook this up and have an awesome meal, and we will catch back. Load them up. Ready to serve. Heck yeah. Some salmon, some korma. Yeah. And this guy's having... Rainbow trout. Rainbow trout. Same family, kind of, sort of. Davey over there had a burger. Yeah, Wave to the folks, Davey. Nice, now he's got almonds. Nate and Mr. Coke over there decided to go for the steaks this evening. Pretty tasty stuff. I'm gonna start eating before uh, before this gets cold. The wind is certainly howling strong here, but it's keeping the fire alive sort of keeping us alive as well too. It is frigid, folks. Hello folks, it's 
been a long day. Time to catch some of these. We'll catch you guys in the morning. Well, good morning, folks. This morning, barely, what is it? Eight o'clock? Just got up. Great sleep. Nice and pretty warm, which is good. As it was minus two last night. Minus two, minus three. So, I'm gonna get up, out of bed, make some coffee, make some breakfast, get the day going. We'll catch you folks in a little bit. What appears we caught a little catfish. We're gonna let him go. Time to do a little bit more fishing. As you folks saw earlier, we caught that catfish. But uh, fortunately, we uh, we let it go. It was too small, and it uh, it actually had a, a wound on its stomach, it was, so it, it it wasn't all that healthy. We let it go, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think that that guy's going to make it much longer. Wind is still there, that's for certain. But it's a little calmer on this this side of the peninsula. Where we where we're actually where the campfire is, it's still pretty pretty windy, so excuse me. <laughs> the boys hard at work here. Nineteen twenty. So just counting the rings. 22, 23, 24, of the pine here. So the, the age of the rings. 26, 27, sorry. Yeah, it's about a thirty year old tree. So basically the rings of the actual tree itself identifies what the age of the tree actually is. So we figure that this tree, based on the rings, 30. 30 years old. And the, the narrower rings are like a, a worse uh, growing year, and then the thicker rings are a better growing year for the tree. So like, for example, there you go, hopefully yeah, it's like thick growing year right here. These are like really good years for the tree. It's probably really wet, really warm. There you go. So it appears that the boys Solved the issue. Uh, they move the tarps pointing on this direction, which still creates the redirection of the smoke, but at least it's not going to the face. Looking all right. We're getting a little bit of wood here. We found uh, some maple, so what we've been burning is pretty much all pine. Burning? So it burns rather quickly. <coughs> We're almost through. But this is maple, so it's a lot more of a dense wood. Good wood. Good wood. As you guys can tell, processing wood is a crucial part in staying warm. Just carrying some more wood back and gonna filtrate some water and uh, do a couple things around camp before settling down and making some dinner. The fruit of our labor. Burning pretty good. All right, folks, so tonight we're having some steaks. So we got some hickory wood chips at the back. They're actually apple wood, but what we're going to do is sear this steak in a nice manner, flip it after three minutes, 
Should be good to go. She's burning pretty well. That's how a man eats a steak. Yeah. I just brought a hoodie. <laughs> 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 That's a big cavity of hellfire in there. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Hey folks. So here we go. Uh, the nightly ritual of hanging up the tree. Hang up the tree! That's what we call it. No, it's hanging up the food. So basically we're going to lift this up a little bit. About a level that no animal can reach it. So we hang it up at least 10 to 15 feet above the ground just to make sure that no animals get it. It's kind of one of those things that Unfortunately, what we've seen here is that there's not quite a bit of animals. Like, we've walked across the peninsula and everything like that, and we have not seen any form of deer, bear, or even raccoon dung whatsoever. So, it's one of those things where we've determined that there isn't a whole heck of a lot of animals around in the area. But, regardless of the situation, we still need to hang things up like that just for as a safety precaution but you know what it's what you got to do right here I can't believe you there she hangs tall and strong well folks it's time to call it a night it's been a long day it's quite chilly as you can see the breath in my mouth but uh but anyways on night and we shall see you guys bright and early in the morning have a good night folks well good morning folks another chilly night out here in the woods pack up day pack up day Sunday Gonna make some coffee and uh, some breakfast as well. Let's start packing up. Well, folks, time to pack up. It's already taken down the tarp, as you can see, and. Uh, I'm gonna wrap that up and then start taking down the tent, but slowly but surely, get it all down. Well, folks, that's all that. All the gear is packed up, ready to go. We have our guide coming. At uh, either 11:30 or 12:30, we uh, we gave them a call because we were capable of getting some cell phone reception up on the rock, and we asked for a an earlier boat ride out. But uh, they're a bit skeptical. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. But another hour out here will not hurt whatsoever. So we're burning off the rest of the fire. Like we have the perfect amount. There isn't too, too much left. Yeah. 
So we passed our 1130 pickup, but uh, but it's arranged for us to get picked up at 1230, so we're all right. We're in a good spot. Final load up here. We're getting there. Well, that's it, folks. Time to head on over to the boat and head on out of here. Yeah, I forgot. All unloaded from the boats and into the cars. Well, this is not certainly not the place that we were expecting to be. Unfortunately, about 100, 150 kilometers in, the truck died on us. So after some MacGyvering, we managed to actually get her going. So it appears that there was some corrosion on the actual terminals. So Ryan, being the handy mechanic that he is. <laughs> Us old truck people need to stick together. <laughs> We're a dying <Man>. breed. <laughs> Managed to get her started again, so. I'd like to thank uh, Leatherman Tools and Mechanics Gloves. <laughs> there we go. So we'll see how uh, the voltage level is in a little bit here. Unfortunately, our fix did not work out. We're back to low level on the battery. That's the way we'll make it back home. In this guy. Well, we made it home. <laughs> well, folks, that's the end of the road. Thanks for joining. Catch you guys on the next one. Why am I here? I'm here because this is the last hurrah of the of the season. I wanted to get out of town and uh, get out in the bush and do some fish. There's times like this, and I just think to myself, you know, you get at home, you get everything all together. Pack up the car, you drive, about four or five hours. You get here, you unload the car, you load up the boat, you get out here, and then you're just standing on this rock like this. You just think to yourself, it's where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. 